Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. I thought I'd do one of my training analysis videos today, this time looking at 80-20 running, which basically means you're meant to be running 80% of your time sort of easier and 20% of your time harder. Now it's quite a difficult definition and I've, I've had a various discussions about it, but I think the easiest way to do it is just treat the number of sessions that you do, just divide them into what is basically an easy session or what is a harder session. Now there's various different themes on this, like math training is also another way to basically emphasize running slower rather than faster faster to get to end up running faster so the general principle is don't run too hard too often now 8020 was found to be a good number by a guy called Steven Seiler and then was adopted by Matt Fitzgerald who wrote a book on the subject it's quite a common sort of accepted way of looking at things now what I thought I'd do is actually do one of my sort of stats and answers of it look at some athletes and see what they actually do in terms of their ratio between harder and easy days so I've picked 40 athletes, some elite athletes, some YouTubers, some people I know. It's basically the same set of people I've used in the previous videos. So let's go and have a look at the graph of how it all looks. Okay, so this is a graph here of 5k time along the x-axis here, going from about 13.30 down to about 25 minutes. And then these dots represent the percentage of easy running in the week that I found these athletes are. We'll, we'll talk about who these athletes actually are later on. And so the 80% line is here. Now what's interesting here that there's quite a few people that actually basically run harder more often down to the people here running only 40% of their runs easier. So that means for say if every five times you go out for a run basically only two of those times would be easier. Up to the people here at 90% that means basically nearly all their runs are easy and then only going out harder maybe once in every 10 runs. So instantly you kind of think, well, if this 80% is some golden rule, it's a bit like cadence, well, there's plenty of people that seem to be breaking the rule. So here's a spreadsheet of all the athletes that I've used. And here is their easier ratio and their harder ratio. So Jack Rowe, is, um, by chance, fits exactly the 80-20 ratio. Now, what I've done is I basically looked at their training and for each run that they do, I've just basically decided, was that an easier or harder run for them? Mostly that's kind of obvious. If they're going out for an easy run, they might say so in their comments. If they're doing a track session, it's clearly harder. It gets a bit more sort of difficult to tell when they're going out for sort of, say, a long run that's sort of reasonable pace. But I've tended to take a view that if it's about a minute per mile slower than their marathon pace or estimated marathon pace based on their 5K time, then that I would call that an easier run. And if it's comfortably within a minute, so like 30 seconds of their marathon pace, I call that a harder run. So all hopefully all comes out in the wash. And as you can see, there's quite a different range of approaches here amongst the, even the elite athletes. Jack Rowe seems to go harder, slightly less often than some of the other ones. But what I'd also say with this, I've, no one's approach here I'd say is wrong. A lot of these people have been doing PBs and really working well for them. So I think that's one of the things I would have to take out of this is that this 80-20 rule may be something that works out on average, but no one person is ever going to find their best way by just picking a one rule. And I think it also depends on what events you're doing here. So for instance, Mark Symes is you know, my age group, more or less. I think he's still N50, but he's targeting 8s and 15s. And perhaps understandably, he's doing a bit more quality than, say, someone like Seth Demore, who likes to basically run very easy most of the time, but is you know clearly a far quicker 5K runner and marathon runner than Mark would be if he did those events. Admittedly, he's a bit older. So let's go and have a look at some people in more detail to show you what I mean. So here's Jack Rhodes Strava, and I've taken his period from February. It looked like he was still in Kenya then, just coming back. So here's a run he did on the February the 6th with Phil Seizerman, and he's even called it slow long run. Um, 7 minute 06 pace, 14 miles, on presumably quite a hilly circuit in Kenya. Oh yeah, you can see from the uh, elevation there, it's really up and down, isn't it? And then his next run was also uh, an even slower run. So that both those two runs I would count is for his easy. So that would be part of like the 80 and the 80-20. Then obviously this one here, he's doing some intervals. So I definitely call that one harder. And then it's quite good with Jack because he even tells you what sort of run it is. So easy, obviously easy there. And obviously 719 pace, even at altitude in Hilly, is going to be quite easy for someone of his capabilities. And as you can see, it goes on another easy run there. So, yeah, just from this quick glance at his training, he's not doing a huge amount of interval sessions. We've only seen one so far. 
and then oh there we go it's an eight mile tempo at 457 pace it's quite scary how fast these elite athletes go but that clearly then would be one of the harder ones and then phil seisman was doing a similar sort of session as well so we just scroll through so then again you see like you know it's, it's interesting how often they go slowly these elite athletes i mean seven minute mile pace you think well that's sort of that's not even my marathon pace if i'm fit and hamstrings aside so you could kind of think i could probably keep up on some of their easier runs but there's no way going to be keeping up with their uh, sub five minute tempos and stuff like that and then even a midweek long run here 12 and a half miles at 704 pace still admittedly we're in kenya of course but just goes to show and here's a track session looks like warming up so so I hope you can see that there's quite a lot of easy running in amongst the sessions here. And the next week looks like he was back uh, in the UK and, uh, you know, slow long run, 6.39 pace. Well, yeah, I mean, if, when you consider his 5K pace is about 4.30, so his marathon pace would probably be, if he did a marathon, it'd probably be around about five minute miling. So he's running quite a lot slower than he's sort of, potential marathon pace so no one really calls that a slow wrong long, long run i mean for me that would be basically faster than i can actually do i think uh, these days but uh, yeah he's, <laughs> he's so much quicker than me now but again even in the uk he's still going out six miles at seven minute mile pace for him and looks like he's doing a warm down from a session here although this is actually the um the 5k road race in battersea park that he won I can't remember his exact time, it was about 13.40 odd I think. And if you see like the day before he was just doing a, a solid 6 miles at 6.30 pace and then goes on to run 2 minutes a mile quicker the next day. It just show, goes to show with these athletes how much quicker they can go in races than they can in training. So I think a lot of us would be of lesser ability would be going out and running. Well for me I might go out and run that sort of 7.30 pace and then go and race at 6.30 pace. It's such a closer differential. But you see again a lot more sort of easy runs here. And here's a track session that looks like his last one in Kenya. And then the next week, uh, same again, 18, 19 miles at 6.48. So it's interesting, they're running quite a long way for people that basically are targeting 5K races and stuff. Here's some tempo. I presume that was on a treadmill because there's no GPS graph or anything. But there, 6 miles at 4.58. We can only dream, can't we? Okay, so let's look at somebody who's another elite athlete but targeting a slightly different event. So let's look at Adam Fogg, who's also on YouTube as the Fogg Dog Exclusive. And I worked out his ratio is 75 to 25, so very close to 80-20. But he's actually in the middle of his mile indoor racing season, made the NCAA finals. I think he got knocked out in the heat, I oh, saw, unfortunately. Very good athlete, a sub-4 miler, 356, I think he's current PB. He's actually came via Australia and currently in America. He's actually declared for GB. So here's Adam Fogg Strava. Let's have a look at his week in early January here. And he's actually still in... The England at the moment. I think his parents come from England, or at least one of them. So that's why he's kind of representing GB, or will do if you get, if he gets selected. So here's quite an interesting one: a long run there, of 16 miles at 6:11. That's probably sort of reasonably comfortable for him. But I think that's the sort of run I would count as a harder run, because if you go like like the next one here, treadmill running, four miles at 6:52. That's so much easier than this one, isn't it? So on a sort of binary decision-making process, you have to sort of make those calls. And then you've got a warm down here from a track session. So that definitely would be a, a harder one. I'd probably discounted the, the warm downs and warm ups from track sessions as separate runs. But if they did a run in the morning and run in the evening, I would call that separate runs. And if we stroll down here, it's interesting that he actually titles some, a lot of his easy runs as jog. So <laughs> jog at my marathon pace is, uh, again, it's quite interesting how... Uh, the, the different sort of perceptions of these paces but yeah clearly for guys who run it sub four milers i mean he's running basically three minutes a mile slower than his race pace here so none that we calls it a jog and again another jog here seven and a half miles at 636 pace so you can see that there's plenty of uh jogging in inverted commas now this really was a, a jog uh five miles at 827 i think even I, I might call that one a jog so <laughs> that's, that's interesting and oh the camel trail that's an old railway that's interesting so that was, I was back in, I'm going back in time on these first weeks there so 14 miles at 613 and again that's sort of a borderline is that hard one and is that an easy one so I think um, I may have slightly persuaded that to the harder one but then if it only did five miles at the same pace I perhaps made that an easier one 
and then here he is on the track again. So you can see there's a lot of variety between sessions and easier runs. And here we was down in Par near um, Jackie, who works for us on Athletics Data and Power of Ten. So let's pick somebody now who's more sub elite. Now there's quite two contrasting styles here between Seth James Demore on YouTube and Ollie Garrod, who's quite uh, who I know reasonably well. He 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 lives quite near me, and often meet him in races. Well, <laughs> meet him after the race. He tends to run off. And then we also got Matt Reese here, who's well. He's had his motto of all in, but actually when you look at his training. He's, he actually does a lot of easier runs. So you've got actually three contrasting styles here. Seth at 9010 is basically doing nearly all his running easy. Ollie Garrod, he's although he's running about 100 miles a week, and he's, you see his average training pace there is almost two minutes a mile quicker than Seth. Now, interestingly, his training average pace is almost exactly the same as Matt's. And yet, Oli, because he does a lot of races, I think that's why I've marked him up as a higher thing. So let's have a quick look at Seth Demore's training. So here is from an early week in February. Now this is perhaps one of his harder runs, 23 miles at 6.35 pace. So I think I would have counted that as a borderline hard run. But then if you look the next day, he's going out 8 miles at 8.54. Now clearly for somebody who's running a 2.23 marathon has got aspirations of running a sub 2.20, you would have to say that that is quite, quite easy. But it sort of continues on this theme, 9 miles at 9.05 pace. Admittedly, there's a few hills in here, and it's at altitude, but even so. Um, but then he's got one of his tempo runs here. Now, was he doing that on the snow? Well, that would be quite fast he's doing on that snow. But you see, definitely that will be a harder run there, 6 miles at 5.22. And then you've got a very easy run here, another re very easy run there, another very easy run there. Another very easy run there, and so it goes on. Don't know why that says VO2 max, because that seems like quite an easy run. And again, yeah, a lot, a lot of these very easy runs. So it's quite a very polarised training. So he's basically running about nine minutes a mile average on his easy runs, and yet he's able to turn the screws down to sort of 520s for his threshold pace, and can do these sort of medium long runs at 630s. But of course, don't forget, he's trying to run, I think it's around about a 520 minute per mile pace in his marathon. So... It's interesting to see whether this is going to work out. I'm a little sceptical, but he seems to know what he's doing. And uh, he's probably one of the biggest YouTubers out there for running. So, uh, But yeah, uh, yeah, you can't deny the fact he's he has run a 65 half marathon. But it's very interesting the different approaches that these athletes take. So if you contrast this with Oli Garrod here. So this is a training week, quite a recent one. So on the Sunday night, he was just doing a bit of easy riding back from where he was. So he'd actually done the Brighton Half Marathon here in 69.14 in the morning and then in the evening he'd gone on a treadmill session for seven, a seven minute miling. So that's the one easy run and one harder run for sure. And then the previous day he'd actually done the National Cross Country, so that's another hard run. But then he'd actually done a four and a half mile sort of long warm down. So I've given him an easier run for that one as well. And if we scroll past all the other people. And on the previous day he'd done a part run in 15.53. Not that hard for him but I still mark that as a hard run because that's clearly that's five that's 511 pace so it's going to be hard by him on standard even that's not going to be flat out and then on the previous day he'd done a 5k so there's amazing contrast in standards here I mean Ollie's running really well he's running about 100 miles a week he's running got similar marathon time to Sester Moore but he's just doing so much quality just using these races to just get used to running fast all the time which is the one thing that Seth isn't doing so yeah, it's so interesting to see if those two raced each other, who would come out top. Totally different approaches. And even here, 8 miles at 6.07 pace in Hyde Park. Yeah, that's not exactly flat out for him. But yeah, it's a decent effort, isn't it? Especially in uh, r rubbish weather. But then you've also got some like treadmill running here, 4 miles at 7.30. So he's not always canning it all the time. Morning run here, 7... 700 miles at 6.15 pace. Again, a good pace for him, but not really that difficult. Some intervals here, 3 by 8 minutes. So there's a lot of these races, you know, a lot of top-up treadmill runs. Two runs here, those two runs on that day, not particularly hard for him. So if you go back to the graph here, 65% of his runs I've made out easy. I think that week was sort of a particularly uh, unusual week with so many races, but it just goes to show that um, their times are literally two seconds apart on marathon times. 
So it's interesting to see how the next marathons pan out. Now Matt Reese has actually got a slightly slower marathon time than those two, but the 5K times are quite representative. So let's have a quick look at him. He's recently done the Solomon 24 hour thing where he had to run for six hours. I think he recently put out a video of that, which I've just been watching earlier on actually. So that was very interesting. See how he approached that. I think he was running about average about six minute mile pace. Let's have a look at a week from say a month ago and here we go <laughs> start off with a rather easy one over three minute miles slower than marathon pace so certainly not an all-in run there and then the next day well that's about my marathon pace but for for matt that's going to be a fairly easy run so i think i would have marked that down as an easy run as well and then he's running with kelly who's one of the other athletes i've featured in here obviously that three miles at 836 pace is going to be easy for matt uh, another one there he's running quite easy another one there he's running quite easy was he doing any hard runs this week let's have a look oh here we go then uh, after all those easy runs we come to 20 miles at 546 pace so yeah quite sort of polarized training here this week and then four miles at 741 and then another session there 25 by one minute with 30 seconds it's a nice little session that just to get a bit of speed in the legs but you can see there amongst, amongst a load of easy runs there's two very hard runs so quite interesting sort of polarized training i think and i think i think he's also been trying this double la uh, lactate sessions things that the ingram britson are famous for i think a lot of people are trying that i think ben felton is also trying that as well and uh, so here's another one here five by one mile. i think this was the same day i think this was the example yeah session two was the 25 by one minute and session one was the five by one minute. So you can see there that for someone whose sort of motto is all in, he's running slowly quite a lot of the time. And perhaps the, the sort of runs that you don't see unless you having to sort of study the Strava in more detail. So he basically sort of in the end sort of comes in between the two extremes here. Although, you know, we're extremes with a pinch of salt because about three quarters of Matt's runs are easier and you know Seth is nearly doing nearly all his runs easy you know 90 percent and then Ollie is sort of just doing a bit more quality uses a lot races a lot more than the other two so interesting three different approaches all landing out at very similar times now Michael Young is an interesting one because he's recently uh, he hooked up with Chris Bird who used to train uh, Andy the FOD runner and, and Lee Kibble so it's interesting to see how that training approach changes I mean Michael Young was someone notorious, as he said himself, for running quite slowly, not quite perhaps as slowly as Sester Moore uh, in his training, but an average training pace last year worked out of 8.19. I think actually when I asked him, he's actually hidden some of his easier runs on Strava. So his 75%, 25% may be slightly higher. It may be actually more like 80-20, but I think it'd be interesting to see whether Chris gets him to do a bit more quality, which is quite a good time to move on. And now... Andy, the FOG runner, isn't training with Chris Bird anymore, but I think he still adopts a similar type of training approach. So it's interesting that Andy and Lee Kibble have the lowest easy percent rate ratios, but I think that's partly because of the fact they don't do a huge amount of mileage. So let's have a look at Andy's training. So uh, Andy had been injured sort of around Christmas time, so I'll, I'll look at a week sort of about a month ago so here's a, on a Sunday he did a race a 10 mile race uh, that Matt Reese actually won the, Andy the, the Matt Reese the wash on who we've just been talking about so obviously that was a hard day for Andy doing a race there and then going back to the warm up he's actually got a treadmill now he's running on Swift which I often do quite a lot in fact I was one of the sort of early adopters of Swift running so but yeah you can see that for Andy that's quite an easy run eight miles at eight minute mile pace Although he did say that his treadmill seems to run slowly, but even so, that's still a, clearly an easy run. But then here we go, moderate pace. So this is an interesting one. Is that is that a hard one or that is that an easy one? That's kind of this sort of grey zone. It's hard to tell. I think some of these I may have classified as slightly harder. I think for me, I'd probably classify that just borderline harder run. I mean, don't forget, this is like a binary thing. So this is one of the drawbacks with this approach. It's either one way or the other. But then clearly here, you've got a harder day. He was doing intervals and a long cool down. And then he's actually running in the relay, actually. And then 19 minutes moderate, 10 miles at 6.43. So it's a good aerobic pace. But again, 
that is, I would say, within about 30, 40, 30 40 seconds of his marathon pace. I think by more, my rule of thumb, I think I just put, push that into the, the harder zone. So I think, look at his training there. He's running five times a week. He's doing two sessions, uh, one's, one sort of like moderate sort of medium length run one sort of long run at a fairly good pace and one easier run so that it come out in the wash at 40 percent but i think that's partly because of the fact he's not actually running that often if he was running say seven days a week i think he would have to probably get that ratio down to more like 60 40 rather than 40 60 so i'm interested to see whether he takes that training approach in the years to come because i think he's all said that he's looking to sort of make the most of where he is at his current level and then build it up as, as we go along so it'll be interesting to watch that i mean you can't deny it works because he's just recently done a 10k pb of a low 34 so as i said earlier i'm just not criticizing anyone's approach i'm just looking at what they do and seeing if it works for them and i don't think anyone's training here i'd say is wrong some people's training like Seth, I, I look at it and think well that's not really how i would approach it but that's the way the way he likes to do it and you know his times speak for themselves i mean you know 65 minutes for a half marathon i mean that is very good running you know that's way way faster than i could ever have hoped to have done so you know it's a bit stupid of me to say he's trying he's wrong when he's just running so much slower but you kind of think well does it really make sense to run so many nine minute miles if you want to race a marathon at 520 we, we shall see shortly in rotterdam where matt and also seth are going to be running which is to see who wins out of those two wouldn't that so let's have a quick look at my training now i've been scuppered recently because of this hamstring issue i've had but in january i was running well so let's focus back on early january so on sunday here i think i was doing the squid game i was doing a bit of drawing of the umbrella and so this was actually one of the harder ones for me but it's interesting that 10 miles for me at 706 pace is a hard run whereas someone like uh, jack rowe was doing maybe 20 miles at 630 pace and calling that a slow long run <laughs> so it's all relative isn't it you know but definitely that's a harder run for me 10 miles at 706 pace is um yeah that that's sort of definitely working i had to put the next percents on for that one that's it ignore the squid game draw there's my own free umbrella things I, I got it made it through to round four out of six so i didn't do too badly and then so the day before i'd gone out for a long sort of fairly easy run 30 miles there in 155 so definitely easy one although it's long i was actually on zwift there eight miles 806 pace again that would be easy for me that's just over a minute slower than my marathon pace so just meets my criteria for what is an easy run for me and then this is when i do my city stride so it's a, i'm running a sort of a basic circuit and i'm just picking up a few little roads here it actually looks a lot more sort of complicated than it is I mean, most of the time you just feel like you're running normally and just doing a few sort of u-turns now and again but i used to enjoy that sort of running because it made me run longer than it did maybe that would come back to haunt me though but yeah there was basically a half marathon at 924 pace i think i was actually running a bit faster than that and maybe a bit stop start and then here's one i was running a bit faster but i'd still classify that just borderline easy 10 miles at 743 pace that's within a minute or just about of my marathon pace and then again, 11 miles, 8.09. So I was going quite a lot of these good sort of 10 mile runs around about a minute per mile slower than my marathon pace. So I thought that was good aerobic training. What was I doing this day? Yeah, I think it was a bit of an easy day. I think I was touring a few different places, but that was my main run, six miles, 8.19. So again, fairly easy. And then the next week I did a long Sunday run. I was sort of training for the marathon. I've had to unfortunately abandon my marathon plans. But yeah, it's a 15 mile run at 7.46. So that's a reasonable pace for me. I think I was just borderline borderline on the easy side. But um, it's very difficult with this thing to actually quantify some of those runs. I mean, that really is an example of one that doesn't really fit into easy or hard. But on a binary choice, I think I'd have to put that as easy. Now, this is when I did the Squid Game one. I found a very downhill course and tried to run as fast as I could. So, clearly, this was fast. So, this, is, this looks quite flattering. 4.3 miles at 5.44 pace. I think I did a 17, sort of, something like a 17, 15 sort of split in, in, on the way down. A few course records as well. Keep that quiet from the Hazelbeer boys in case they uh, fancy go and nick them off me, which I'm sure they could do. But, yeah, definitely a harder one there. And then the day before... This is when I was obviously quite fit because I was able to do like 10 mile runs at 7.45 pace and then go off and blast a, a flat out run the day after. That's that's what the training does for you. And then you can see I was really training really well at the time, running virtually 10 miles every day at, at this sort of pace, getting really aerobically fit. And I think that's when I took to that sort of fast downhill run, it felt really good. 
And then the next week I ran on, did the 10K in 37.42, which is my best 10K for some years. So here, this was one where I actually, I actually nicked this session off Matt, actually, very similar to these 25 by 60 seconds. I did 90 seconds with 30 seconds rest. So that was uh, definitely one of my harder runs there. And that, even that average pace, uh, that was a bit stop-start. So 30 seconds obviously includes a bit of um, very slow jogging between the, the, the sessions. But that was a very nice session, that. I really enjoyed that one. And then here's an example of a bit of a slow slog out seven miles at 8.25. So my running isn't perhaps as polarised as some people. Do you think that's perhaps one of my um, things I may have got wrong? Maybe I do too, a bit too much running at around about eight minute mile pace. And I need to basically get a few more harder runs in. So when I get back into form I get a bit, I think I'm trying to get a bit of coaching advice and uh, see if I can sort of mix things up a bit. I think sometimes you just need somebody else to sort of give you a few ideas. Anyway, but yeah, look back on that and sort of think, oh, yeah, that was going really well until it didn't. I think I just picked up a few niggles and uh, turned things back. But uh, yeah, um, just goes to show. Okay, I think with this one, I won't show you everybody's training because I've literally got 40 people in and you have to go through them all in fine detail. So I've got everyone's links here and these are all publicly available as far as I know. So you can go and have a gander at these people. And this is, I actually bought the 80-20 book by Matt Fitzgerald. It's called 80-20 Running, Run Stronger and Race Faster by Training Slow. I actually bought this on the Kindle. So I've taken the opportunity just to put the his statement there of the 80-20 rule. And as I said, for the purposes of this analysis, I've just considered literally is one run easy or, or harder. And that's how I got to the figures. So I think from this, I would say it's a bit like the one I did on Cadence, where you've got this view that 180 is one magic number. If you've got the view that 80 20 is one magic number, we can see sort of plenty of examples where people are training a bit harder than that and a few examples where people are doing well training a bit easier than that so richard mcdowell here is one that's running very well off 90 10 although i think that may be slightly skewed by the fact that i don't think he's really training at full volume at the moment and when i looked at his strava he seemed to be sort of taking things easier I couldn't see too many sessions so most of that sort of the harder bit was actually races but he's still doing very well off that cole gibbons is another one i've just recently been following on youtube he's a very good runner running into counties today and his YouTube channel is making good progress. Um, so I thought I'd include him. And it's interesting, I think, because his average training pace is quite slow compared to some of the other people around it. But he's maybe quite polarised training because he had 60% only of easier runs. And yet, if you compare that to, uh, say, Richard Ollington, who's running a similar 5K time, slightly faster average training pace, but running more easy and more often, and then if you look at uh, uh, Seth there at 8.56, it really does stand out. My friend uh, Stephen Cousins always likes to mention, he, he thinks he's the slowest runner on YouTube, uh, an average pace of 11.24, but yeah, he's still got a sub-3 marathon and an 18.16 5K. I think that's because he runs a lot on Swift. He does a lot of runs where he uh, basically does his live cut, um, stream. So he talks a lot and often sort of runs with the slower groups. And I've seen him sometimes, he's literally running three, four, even four times a day. I think he, so that's kind of why he has to run so slowly because he's just running so often. And he is somebody that is an ultra runner. He's recently raced a 100 mile race in Lanzarote, I think it was, or one of the um, Canary Islands. So yeah, rather than him than me, I always like to watch his videos, but think, oh yeah, I think I'd just rather sit at home and watch that. So anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Like and subscribe and all that. And look forward to some interesting comments below when I get this out. Okay, bye then.